Securing an Azure DevOps organization is a pretty important thing to do. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that using tools like security policies, multi-factor authentication, and much more. Let's dive into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coded Dave. Today, we talk about how we can secure our Azure DevOps organization. I've decided to make this video because after talking with many companies and organizations, I realized that most of the time securing development tools and environments is not the priority, even though in my opinion, it should be. Because the question is how we can protect production if we don't take care of all the steps and environments before reaching production. And anyway, most of the time tools like Azure DevOps will need at some point to reach production, to deploy or to monitor our solutions. So anyway, it's better to keep them secured all the way, right? There are many tools and techniques we can use to secure our Azure DevOps organization, and I will try to cover most of them during this video. However, let me know in the comment section below if you have other tools or techniques or approaches you're using to secure your own Azure DevOps organization that maybe I haven't mentioned. All right, first thing you will definitely want to do is connecting your Azure DevOps organization to an Azure Active Directory tenant, because this brings on the table so many advantages. Benefits like a strong identity management, multi-factor authentication, access policies, and much more. Very quickly, to do so, just go to your organization settings, then General, select Azure Active Directory, and click on Connect Directory. At this point, Azure DevOps will load all the Azure AD tenants your account belongs or is connected to and show it to you. Just pick the one you want to connect to, and you're done. Of course, you need to do that with an account that has the proper permissions in your Azure AD. And remember that if you have already some users in your Azure DevOps organization that don't belong to the Azure AD tenant you've selected, they will temporarily lose access to the organization. You can eventually map them back to other users or invite them to your Azure AD. All right, now that we have our Azure DevOps organization connected with Azure AD, let's see what we can do with it. The first cool thing I want to talk about is the dynamic user access. Let's say that you have in your organization and in your AD, a group where all your developers belong to. You can dynamically add access for Azure DevOps projects using Azure AD group rule. Just go to the users under your organization settings, then click on group rules and add a group rule. Search for the group you have in Azure AD, select the access level you want to grant and the projects you want to grant it to. And that's it. Now all the AD users you have in that group will be able to access the Azure DevOps project you've selected with the access level you've set. You can always add or remove projects from that list. And best thing is that your AD administrators will not need access to Azure DevOps to change those policies. They can do that already from Azure AD. There is more to say about this. We're just crushing the surface here. So let me know in the comment section below if you want to see this more in depth and I will make a video just dedicated to this. Anyway, probably the most useful thing you can do thanks to AAD and I promise that after this one, we will move to something that doesn't require AAD, apart from a bonus tip at the end, is enabling the validation of the conditional access policies. You can find this setting under the policies menu inside organization settings. When you enable it, you'll be able to enforce all the policies you have in AAD. And that includes things like allowing the connection to Azure DevOps only from specific IP addresses or using hardware and computers that you've set and so on and so forth. Right, let's move now to see what we can do to secure our Azure DevOps organization without using AAD. But before we move to that, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will help this video to be recommended to more viewers so they can benefit from it. And of course, it would mean a lot to me. So we've seen the policies page just now when enabling the conditional access from AAD, but there's way more to it. As you can see on screen, the available policies you can enable vary whether you have your organization connected to AAD or not. But of course, there are some common ones. The first one, the alternate credentials for authentication, shouldn't be actually there anymore. It will go away very, very soon. So disable it straight away and use the personal access tokens. And by the way, if you want to know how to create a path in Azure DevOps, I have a video that talks just about that. You can find the link up here and in the video description. The second policy is to enable third-party apps to connect to Azure DevOps using OAuth. It is enabled by default, but you can always turn it off if you don't plan to use any third-party application that use OAuth authentication. However, I would not necessarily recommend that because most likely you are going to use some application that requires that form of authentication. For example, Visual Studio. Visual Studio uses OAuth for some of its features to connect with Azure DevOps. And the next one is similar, but it's about SSH authentication. Again, this is enabled by default 
And as the name says, it enables Azure DevOps to generate encryption keys for using with Linux, macOS, and Windows running Git for Windows. I would not recommend turning these off either because SSH authentication, especially for Git, is more secure than the other options. Finally, we have the Allow Public Projects policy. As the name says, when enabled, this allows your users to create public projects. It is disabled by default because public projects are visible to anyone that has a link for them. Enable it only if you plan to have your code publicly visible for at least some projects. Final topic I want to talk about is fine-tuning your organization permissions. Azure DevOps, luckily for us, has a rich and great permission management system. And going to the permissions menu in the organization settings, you can fine tune all the permissions if they don't meet your company policies or they don't suit your needs. In here, you can manage the policies for users and groups separately. Working on groups, you can set the permissions for each part of the service. For example, the group that is supposed to work only on CI-CD won't need access to the creation of processes for Azure boards, so you can remove that. You can also, of course, add members to the groups and change their general settings. When working on users instead, you can really fine tune all the permission for a specific user. Let's say you have a user that needs to be able to perform some additional operations, either extemporary or as part of his duties. You can easily access their profile and enable them on the permissions needed. This will override the permissions the user has as part of the group they are in. Okay, almost done. But as I promised before, I have a bonus tip for you. Working with many clients, I've noticed that there is a tendency, especially in big organizations, where all the departments create new DevOps organizations and everything goes out of control because the IT department can't really check and control this kind of behavior. But luckily for us, using the integration with Azure AD, we have a solution. In the Azure Active Directory page under Organization Settings, in fact, we have this Restricting Organization Creation toggle. When enabled, creation of new organizations for users in your AAD will be disabled. Only the users that are present in the Azure DevOps Administrator group and users you add to the Allow list will be able to create new organizations. If you don't see this toggle in your settings, make sure the user you have logged in into Azure DevOps with is being added to the Azure DevOps Administrator group in your Azure AD, because by default, no user is. Let me know in the comment section below if you found this guide useful, if you use any other tool or technique to secure your Azure DevOps, and if there is any area that you want me to go deeper in another video. Because talking with many clients, I've, I've, if we don't take care Dave, to your Azure, Azure la, 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 la. we'll be able to access the Azure AD projects, sure. Probably the most useful, use, useful fine tuning your organization also, you may want to check this video over here in which I explain how to create personal access tokens in Azure DevOps. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Color Dave. Oh.